everybody! Today's video is all about some new brushes from e.l.f. Um, these were sent to me recently and they are $6 brushes. So double the price of the regular studio line brushes, but they are a little different in that you'll see they have this kind of two-toned fiber going on here. They are really, really soft. I will say the cut of all of them seems very nice, very consistent. You're not seeing like little stray hairs poking up. And um, as I've been using these over the past past about week and a half, I have not experienced any shedding with these. And they seem to be constructed pretty nicely as well. So I can't really complain about the way they're put together. I think for me, it's more a question of, are these worthwhile? Like, do these have a place in my current brush routine where I already have so many different brushes to choose from and so many brushes that I like, even from Elf's own line. You know, I've got brushes that I feel like are currently doing the job. I wasn't really looking for more. And a couple of these brushes have the term selfie ready in the title, which I find to be very gimmicky and kind of annoying. So I'm kind of like cringe when I say that, but whatever. We can get past the title, I suppose. I've got the selfie ready foundation blurring brush. I also have the selfie ready powder blurring brush, the sculpting face brush for contouring, and the flawless face brush. So the way I want to review these is just kind of talk about each one as I show you different application methods with them. So the first one we're going to talk about is this foundation blurring brush. One thing I do think is lacking from the design of the brush is just the name written on the outside. I think that'd be helpful. The ferrule is not pinched in at all at the top, so very rounded in that way. Um, extremely tapered all the way around the brush. Size-wise, it reminds me so much of my Real Techniques buffing brush, um, except it's more tapered up the sides. You've got more like shorter lengths leading up to the longest lengths in the center, whereas this brush is a little bit tapered around the edges, but not as much down the sides. Now I use this to apply my foundation and because of that taper that's a little more steep, it's not maybe the most ideal brush for buffing in circular motions. I feel like a flat top brush or a brush that doesn't have quite as much taper like that buffing brush from Real Techniques can do that job just a little bit more seamlessly. This really may be a little bit better just in terms of sweeping across the skin, not necessarily doing that circular buffing, but it did a good job with my foundation. I really thought it um, blended everything out evenly rather quickly. I would say I like this brush. I could see it being used to blend out like larger patches of concealer on your skin or even applying, you know, a contour cream or powder. But just in terms of the shape and size, it is pretty similar to a lot of different brushes that are out there now. Like it's just not an extremely unique cut. If you really got to looking through your collection, I think you would find maybe some brushes you already have from brands like Sigma, Real Techniques that are nice and soft like that. And a similar shape and size and kind of perform the same way. Now the next brush that I want to talk about is this sculpting brush and as you can see there's kind of an interesting little dip to the cut of this brush. It's definitely a flat brush in terms of not having any taper down the sides but they've done this interesting like little just cut just like a chunk right out of the brush that is designed to sort of cup the cheekbone area and my issue with this is that if I'm gonna pick up product on the whole brush, you know, from a powder or a cream and then apply it to my cheek, then I'm getting contour powder like all the way up high here, you know, like higher than I would want it. So when I used this with the cream contour, I tried to focus it more toward the bottom part of the brush with the shorter bristles. So that confined my contour more to the area where I wanted it. After that application, I needed to bring in another brush to help me blend it out. The bristles are just so concentrated and compact, it's going to be difficult to get a blend with that kind of a thing. So I brought in one of the other brushes from this line, which is actually the powder blurring brush. And I like the shape of this brush because it is pinched in a bit at the ferrule, but it's relatively short and it's very dense. When you turn it sideways, it actually really nicely fits the contour of your cheek. So I just used that to blend out any of my cream contour that I used all over my face and I thought it did an awesome job. And as far as this brush goes, the sculpting brush, for what this did, I feel like I could have just swiped the product on with my finger Finger, you know, and pretty much got it in the exact place where I wanted it and really felt for my cheekbone and all that, and then just brought in a different buffing brush to blend it all out. And just to show you the difference between this one and the foundation brush, see how the ferrule at the top, you know, you're a little more pinched in over here. It kind of widens the, the fan of the bristles. And this one, while there is a slight taper on the sides, they stay a bit more uniform in length. And actually, I think this blends out foundation in a buffing 
Bleaching Manor even better than the other one. And these are all like the same style of synthetic brush hairs. And so one may be labeled for foundation, but it works better for something else. Or this one was labeled powder and it works maybe better for foundation. That's fine. You can use them any way you want to. So I know I didn't demonstrate this with foundation in this video, but I think it works really well for that. As far as an actual application of powder, um, maybe if you were applying powder from a um, powder foundation standpoint and you really wanted maximum coverage from something, but I'm finding most of the time I want a lighter application of powder, not something from a brush like this that's going to give it such a concentrated um, application on the skin. But that little bit of narrow shape that this brush has, I love it for applying contour, either cream or powder. I went over my cream contour with a little bit of powder just to show you that. So this is probably one of my favorites of the bunch just for the fact that it's a little different shape than anything else I have. I like how it applies everything from foundation to cream or powder contours. Oh, and I almost forgot, it's also nice um, just for gently blending out your concealer because, again, the shape of this, it can really get in there around the sides of the nose surprisingly well. Now the final brush is the Flawless Face Brush, and I would see this as kind of a powder brush multitasker. I was really interested when I saw this, as soon as I got it, I thought I'm gonna have to bust out my e.l.f. complexion brush and see how these two compare because this is kind of my current like powder multitasker. I'll use it for face powder, bronzer, um, contour occasionally. The complexion brush sort of fans out left to right a little bit more, whereas this one domes upward somewhat more. They're honestly both extremely soft. I feel like my complexion brush is very soft. I've never had any complaints about that. This one just seems to stay a little bit more domed and compact in terms of the shape, and that can make it more versatile for the application of things like highlight and blush, which are a couple of things that I wouldn't normally use this brush to apply. So just to see it in action, for me on my look today, this did an all over dusting of like just a little bit of powder to set my foundation. Um, I applied my blush with this. Also within my little CoverGirl blush, there's a bit of a highlight. And due to the slightly more domed nature of this brush, I can use that top tip to kind of isolate it right there in the highlight and really get that application over just a small area. So in a sense, I think this is kind of more versatile than my e.l.f. complexion brush, and I really do like it. So just to wrap this all up, um, you got, again, your foundation brush. I thought it performed well. You know, it did a good job for what I needed it to do. I just don't find it as a real standout compared to the many different foundation buffing brushes that I own. The sculpting brush, to me, I just don't see this as a major priority in my collection. For what this does, like I said, I could do it with my fingers, and then you need another brush to come in and blend things out anyway, so that's just not a very important brush for me to have. The powder blurring brush is really one of the stars of this new collection, I think, because um, the shape is a little bit different, just the cut of it, it allows it to do quite a few different things, including the application of foundation. So it's like it's doing what the foundation brush did, plus I think it really is a nice shape for getting right in here for contouring, cream or powder. And the other one that I really did like was this Flawless Face Brush because it reminds me of the complexion brush, just a bit more downsized. It's just got the right amount of fluff paired with the right cut to handle like any powder step that you need to do on your face. So I think that's pretty remarkable. So just my opinion on these brushes. If you've been eyeing them on Elf's website, I hope this helped you out and I will see you again next time. Bye.